Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks avoided a major scare today when his MRI results had come back saying that he had actually sustained no Achilles damage in his most recent non-contact injury against the Boston Celtics. The Milwaukee Bucks have actually posted an update saying that Giannis suffered something known as a soleus strain and currently he's due to miss the final three games of the regular season. The soleus is one of three muscles that are located in the calf and so the amount of time a person is going to be out when it comes to an injury like this is going to depend on the grade of the injury and that's something I want to focus on with today's video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And with my channel, I take a look at sports injuries and I explain them so that they are a little bit easier to understand. I also talk about the relevant anatomy of the injury as well as discuss about what that person should expect when coming to rehab. If you enjoy this sort of content and you want to see more of it, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more of these videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you yourself have suffered a calf strain, Talk about your experience in the comment section below. So we see here on the injury replay that as Giannis is jogging up the court, he's going to plant here. And as he comes back down on that left foot, he's going to fall to the ground and he's actually going to grab in that calf area. Here I have a model of the foot and ankle. And so the first muscle that I want to talk about in the calf is known as the gastrocnemius muscle. This is that big fat muscle that we often associate with being the calf muscle. That is going to be right on top of the other two. The one directly below that is known as the soleus muscle. And finally, we have a tiny muscle that runs from the knee coming down to that Achilles tendon area. This is known as the plantaris muscle. All three of these muscles are going to conjoin together and attach at that Achilles area right here at the calcaneus bone, also known as the heel bone in the foot. Since all three of these muscles come down and form that Achilles tendon, the main motion that these calf muscles are going to be involved in is known as plantar flexion. So this is going to be pointing that toe directly downwards. The opposite of that is going to be dorsiflexion, which is going to be stressing all of those muscles of the calf. The gastrocnemius muscle also crosses the knee, so it's also involved in knee flexion. So any sort of bending the knee motion, that's going to also involve the gastrocnemius. However, the soleus muscle only crosses the ankle Joints, so its actions are predominantly involved at the ankle. It's important to say that the most common muscle to be strained in a calf strain is that gastrocnemius muscle, and this is due for a few factors. The first one being that it is a two joint muscle, so it's going to cross the knee and the ankle joint, and also because it has a high density of fast twitch muscle fibers, and these muscle fibers are the ones that are often involved with explosive things such as sprinting, jumping, and just overall explosive movements coming from the lower leg. We already know in this case that the soleus muscle is the strain that Giannis is dealing with. And it's important to say that the soleus muscle is actually less commonly injured compared to the gastrocnemius because it's going to cross only one joint being the ankle. And finally, it's made up predominantly of slow twitch muscle fibers. So it's going to be involved more in endurance motions rather than those explosive motions. Now, initial fears were that Giannis was dealing with an Achilles tendon rupture. And I wanna go over an on the court or in the clinic test we can do to essentially rule in an Achilles tear. And this is going to be known as the Thompson test. So what we're going to do here, that person is going to be lying prone. And what we're going to do is have this foot hanging right over the table like so. We're going to squeeze on that calf musculature and we're going to see if there's any motion located at the foot and ankle. So anybody with an intact Achilles tendon, as you squeeze that calf muscle, the foot is going to move into plantar flexion. If the person has actually ruptured their Achilles tendon, then the foot is not going to move at all. If we do the Thompson test and we determine that the person's Achilles tendon is in fact intact, then what we can do next is palpate along that calf muscle area and see if we feel things such as a lump and we're going to notice potentially redness and swelling as well because a lot of times these calf strains are accompanied by these symptoms. The gold standard of course to rule in this Achilles type injury is going to be that MRI. Fortunately Giannis had that today and that's going to take us into our grading system for these calf strains and they are grades one, two, and three. In a grade one calf strain this is where you're going to get some stretching of the calf musculature. In a grade two this is where you're getting partial tearing. And finally, in a grade three, this is where you're going to be getting that full rupture. In these grade one calf strains, because it is the least severe, you're going to get a return to sport uh, anywhere from about one to three weeks. In a grade two, because you're getting more partial tearing, this can take anywhere from about three to six weeks. And finally, in the grade three, because this is the absolute worst case scenario and usually requires surgical intervention because there is a full disruption of the affected muscle, this can take anywhere from at least six months. When we get somebody in the clinic for an acute calf strain, essentially what we're going to do initially is we're going to do a lot of symptom management and we're going to follow that acronym RICE, where 
R stands for rest, I stands for ice, C stands for compression, and E stands for elevation. We're gonna follow all of these principles because we essentially want to pump out as much swelling and inflammation as possible to the affected area so that we can finally move into the phase where we can start passively stretching gently through the affected tissue. And then when appropriate, we can start to work in more loading where we're going to essentially strengthen the affected area. And finally, after the person goes to their follow-up visits and they're cleared for more strenuous activity, then we can start to work in more aggressive strengthening and then sport specific movements. If I happen to hear any specific details about Giannis's case in terms of what he's dealing with in rehab, or if there are any updates regarding the specific grade of his injury, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section. Also, if you happen to hear anything, please feel free to update me as well. So we wish Giannis the best of luck moving forward. It looks like they avoided an absolute nightmare of a potential injury with him. However, he could miss some significant time depending on if it is more along the lines of a grade two as opposed to a grade one injury. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this sort of content, I'm going to go ahead and link another one of my playlists so that you can watch some of the videos of the injuries that I've talked about in the past. Thank you so much again for tuning in and I'll see you next time.